Okay. All right. Okay. First time. Wow. Um, it's Fadela. Uh, I don't know if I pronounce your name correctly, but hi, welcome, Fadela. And then we have let's see, Constance, Lisa, were you here last week? Or is this your first time? Oh, first time. Okay, all right, thanks, Lisa, and welcome. Okay, um, do we have anyone here who was, um, was around last week? Because we've had like two sessions and we was supposed to be a continuation. So if everybody here is first time, um, I think I'll, I might decide to go over what we did last week instead. Um, so just let me know if you're here last week. Um, do I know how to plan today? Okay, sorry for the background noise, but I wanted to say you should stick to the agenda since the past week's meetings are recorded then maybe they can watch the recording and ask you questions. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, then I'll probably go with that. And just do like a quick push or something, just so they are not lost in terms of what I, I'm speaking, I'm talking about today. So, um, okay, I'll, ju I'll just do that then. Okay, I think we've waited eight minutes already, so just going to share my screen um and for those in um is anyone already programming in python um how would you rate yourself uh, are you now starting are you a beginner which means you know some bit about python intermediate or you are a pro right um if you can rate yourself or just indicate this in the chat um that would also help Let's do this. All right, let me keep this chat. Okay, we need to to program in. Okay, Lucia, you are new to programming. All right. Let me just bring this one here. Okay. All right, so welcome to Women Who Code Python Labs or oh, Intermediate. Okay, nice. The Python Labs, this is our third session. Um, we've had previous sessions um, for, for this month's meeting or for our scheduled meeting, this would be the last one. Um, we had a meeting, a lab session last week and we had a lab one, which we had, I think it was in somewhere late in 2022, okay. So, for lab one, what we generally covered was um, introduction to Python. So this session, our lab so far, we're introducing people to Python. So um, it's mainly for those who are who, ha who have no knowledge in Python, right? So we're starting from um, assuming that people do not have any knowledge in Python and then introducing them to it. So if 
if you know programming or you know some other language and you are interested in getting to into Python, um, this is a good session for you because you get to go over or start and get to understand the concepts and how Python deals with um, some con some of the concepts. So we talked about, um, I mean, we're using Python 3 and we use the Jupyter notebook I mean, most of the time. Um, I mean, that's what I would use, right? So I'd probably recommend that if you follow along what I would use. Um, but then in these labs, you get to see me using VS Code with Jupyter. Right? Um, there are also some links in the notebooks that would show you how to install it as if you'd want, but you can use any other editor you're comfortable with. So in our first lab, we talked about mainly just introducing, so it's values, variables, operators, comments, and we talked about one built-in function, that's the print, okay? And we went over that. Okay, so let's see, Constance um, recently completed Python course. Okay, great. So uh, that's what we covered in our first session, okay? And all these, just, just to let you know before we move on, all these labs. Okay, hi, Fiara, thank you. And okay. Hi, Fia, you are muted. Do you want to say something? Okay, I guess she's having issues with the microphone. So yeah, if is dropping off because she has some other appointments, but we would continue. So for all these labs, currently we are in our lab three and all these files are on GitHub, right? So I shared the link last week, I'm just putting it here. So if you go to GitHub, um, it is available there. Also, um, for those who are probably not comfortable with GitHub, what we did is also share that and I mean, that's a Google form, which I'll be sharing the link very soon where you can enter your email and then I'll share the Google Collab files with you, right? So we have two options, uh, either with GitHub or Google Collab. And so that's where you can access the documents. So as I mentioned earlier, we went over these, that's the values, variables, operators, comments, and built-in functions, right? Do I need to go over this or is this a concept that everybody, everyone here understands so that I do not have to go over it and I can just um, mention the topics and then we would move on to our third lab. Are we okay? So let me see with Lucia. Yes, Lucia, you mentioned that you are new to programming. Um, do you understand? what I've just mentioned, the topics, um, values and types, variables, operators, comments, and the print function in Python. Oh, no, I don't understand this one. I'm familiar okay. with, I'm familiar with HTML and CSS, but so I don't know Python. Oh, okay. okay. A little bit, yeah. Okay, all right, okay, makes sense. All right, so let me just um, then, the recordings are on YouTube. Um, that's one, if you go, if you search for women who could, um, I think we also have the links that I would probably need to grab and share it. But then what I'm going to do is like a quick run through, um, just so that you have like something understanding. You can go through these documents or um, the recording if you need more detailed information, okay? So for values and types, we're just talking about, um, the data that you'll be dealing with in any programming language, right? It's of some type, it's of, um, it's of some type. So it's either going to be some string, it's going to be some numbers and numbers can either be integers, that's whole numbers or floats decimal. And then you may also deal with Boolean, which is true or false values, okay? Um, so in Python for strings, it's mainly um, some text or some characters that is wrapped in single quotes or double quotes, right? So if you see anything wrapped in single or double quotes, it indicates that 
as a string, right? And then for whole numbers, we would um, there's nothing wrapping around it and they're whole numbers. And then for floats, it would be the small numbers, okay? And for true and false, that would be for Boolean. And Python is very case sensitive for true or false. We're talking about a capital T and a capital F, right? That would indicate it's being Boolean. If you if you change the case, it's no longer a Boolean value. Okay. All right. So and then for variables, just for you to understand. So variables are more of names that are referencing some value, right? So we just talked about values and the types of values you can you may deal with in. Python. So variables are some name that you, that would reference some value. Okay. So for example, I just said weight equals 69. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm assigning the value 69 to a variable called weight. Okay. So wherever Python sees weight with this case, it knows that the it's value 69 that we are dealing with. Okay. So Variable types are also based on the values you assign to it. Okay, so I hope up to this point, um, yeah, okay. If you have any question, just put it in the chat and I would repeat or go over that aspect. Okay. And then we have operators. So operators are um, special symbols that represent some computation of some value. So we have what you already know. So we have plus. Um, division, subtraction, and all those that work in Python. Okay, so the usual and common mathematical um, operators that would work in Python. Okay, so you can add in, if you, that's if you are adding numbers, right? So numbers, when I talk about numbers, I'm talking about integers and floats in this case, okay? Um, the same plus sign for strings would add, work as a concatenation. Okay, so that would be picking one value, attaching the, the other string value to it. Okay, so you would see that here and it does not add spaces in between. It just uh, picks one up and the other one right after it. Okay. Um, the other thing we talked about is multiplication with strings replicates the string value. So if I had, if I have ha and I say, um, I enter times 20, I, it means that replicates um, each a 20 times, okay? And then we have the hash. Hash is for comments. Um, I believe you've dealt with comments in, in CSS. So hash is for comments in Python. So the moment you, um, Entering anything after I hash this comment. In. Then in Python, we have, um, so those who joined, uh, I'm just having a quick refresh on what we did last week in the previous lab, because we have some first timers. Um, so this period is just a quick refresh and going to um, our lab three for today. Okay. All right. So we have the print function and print function in Python, what it does is it displays an output, right? So it's displaying some value on the screen and display some string. Okay. Whatever is passed to the print, it's being converted to string, right? So it's like the better value is string. So if I put in hello here, what we do is we we'll just print it out or display it out um, for, um, on your display screen, right? So that's what print function does. And as I mentioned earlier, case sensitive, so it's a small p, and then you put in the value, um, the string you want in between the brackets, okay? We do have, um, we had, we created a simple BMI calculator app. And what it was doing is just picking, um, setting some variables to some values. Um, we did some conversion by dividing by 100 and then uh, finally calculated the BMI using the BMI formula and the 10 and that value. Okay, so that was for our first lab. That's just what we went through. For lab two, 
that was last week. What we did is to build up on what we did in lab one. So um, in lab two, we went over some more built-in functions. That was the input in fluid STR. And then we went over Boolean expressions, logical operators, and then conditional execution, okay? So as I said, there's going to be like quick run through. Um, I've shared the GitHub repo link with you. The videos would also be on YouTube. So you can go back if there's any part you do not understand. But um, you're also welcome to put in your questions in the chat and I will address those. So for built-in functions, um, we, looked at, uh, we looked at the inputs. Input is, uh, what the input function does is um, allow users to key in some value, okay? Um, so the program will stop, wait for a user to key in the value, that value is returned to the program, and then you can use it for whatever purpose you would want to use that input. And every value that's written from the input function is of type string. Okay. And sometimes we take some of these inputs and we want to use it for something else. Maybe we're, we're expecting some numeric value and want to use it for numeric calculation. Because the type is string, we need to convert it into either int or float so that we can use it for those numeric um computation um, because performing some numeric computation on string may give you an error or it would give you a wrong output right like if you're if you ended up multiplying you get something wrong because it would replicate your string value okay so um that's where we got we went through the int the fruit and str functions and these convert um data types into specific type to integer type int will be integer type float will be float type and str will be string type. Okay. Um, with that, we upgraded our BMI calculator up and took input instead. Right. And then right after that, we move on to Boolean expressions. Boolean expressions would evaluate always to either true or false. Okay. So that's why we have like comparisons. So greater than, less than, less than, equal to, not equal to, all those would be, um, would evaluate with true or false. So it's either two is less than three or is either true or false, right? So if I have two, two is less than three, it's either a true or false statement. In the same way, we also look at and or, or not logical operators. And um, that's where we have the general logical operations um, that is known. So if I have and, it means that both statements should be true for the final output to be true, right? If it's all either being true, uh, makes evaluate it to true, right? And then not would negate it. Okay. I, um, are you okay up to this point? I know there's like a quick run through. But I hope it, it, it just gives you the idea in terms of what we are talking about. And then when we continue, you won't be lost. Okay, great. All right. Okay, so I think right after that, we went into conditional execution. So for conditional execution, this is where you get to tweak the or change the behavior of your program based on some conditions. So you can have your program behave in one particular way or the other based on some conditions that um, are true, right, or false. So we had the if, if else, if else, else, and then the try and accept, okay? So if is, um, you're checking if some condition is true, when it's true, you should do something in particular, right? Um, if it's not true, it does nothing. It doesn't go through that section of the code. And then we have the if and else. Um, just one thing to note because um, um, for those who are new, for these conditional statements and any other code that deals with a block of statement, in Python, you would use the colon. Right? So a column after a statement or after a line indicates that, okay, we are starting a block of code. And 
that when an any code within that block would have the same indentation level, right? So if you indent it one, um, all codes in that block should have, should start from the same point. Um, spaces, cases are important in Python. So that's something you just need to take note of. All right, so we have if else. So if, if number is greater than zero, then it's positive else, um, it's negative. Right? So that's something you're, uh, you're checking and um, you have an alternate line of code or alternate block that runs when your condition is false. Then we have the if elephant else. So if some condition is true, elif is more like else if, right? you just merge it into one word. So elif is else if you add another condition and else is when all the other conditions are not true. Okay. And then we did talk about try and accept. So try accept how that works is, so try is try running this section of code if everything works, there's no error, that's okay. That's the block that runs. The moment there's a runtime error or there's any error that comes up at that point, the accept section is what runs. So try doing all of these. Um, if there's no error, that's our final output. The moment you hit an error, any runtime error, then the accept section of the code runs, okay. So that's where we actually ended, ended it last week. Okay. And we had, oh, okay. And we had the version three where that became more of an assignment for those who were last week to, to upgrade the our BMI calculator app. So we are upgrading it throughout the, the lab. So we were to upgrade it to the version three based on what we've le we learned in the lab two. Um, do we have anyone here? Were you able to complete it? Those who were here last week, were you able to go through it? Did you have any issues upgrading it? Yeah, I tried, but the accept part was a bit tricky. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good that you did try. So um, I think we can go through it together. And then if you have any questions, just put it in the chat or you can just raise your hand and then we can discuss that. Okay. So for uh, version three, which I did start by and I stopped because um, I wanted us to do it together. Um, as a point, I was just going to do a uh, completed and then we would kind of like go through the code I've written. But I wanted to try like live, live going through it so that we do it together and then can ask questions. Um, there are some aspects that I just copied from, from the two. So let me see if I can, then where I can undo this. Great. Okay, so, all right. So I just copied this from our version two, right? So this is exactly the version two code. So we're changing it to our version three based on what we've learned, okay? So version three of our BMI app, what we are doing is our general process of calculating a BMI, but we're just going to add, um, some indicators to it. So based on the BMI, see if a person is in the green, red, or orange, right? So that's what um, we're going through for this, or the changes we are making up the our upgrade version for our BMI calculator. So first off, now we know try and accept. So I'd want to wrap this in a try and accept so that whenever there is an error. So first, I can actually have the try and set here, but just to be, just to be sure, because the input is being converted in that section, we can have errors. Right? Um, I mentioned last week that users can be very unpredictable. So somebody could type in the number in words for you instead. 
So let's just move everything into our try and accept, our try section. So accept. So when there's an error, what we want is to print. That's okay. VS Code is just adding extra stuff. So we go with, oops, all right. So oops, something, something is wrong. Is it? Um, so we have try and accept. This has already upgraded it a bit. Can you hear me clearly? I just go messing that my internet is unstable. Is it okay? Can you hear clearly? Okay, Constance, thanks. Thanks for the reaction. All right. So now we do have our BMI value here. And for our indicator, it's going to be based on some value. So there's a BMI range that I definitely do not have it in my head. So I had to had to go and Google that and, and find out, right? So there is there is the anything less than 18.5 being underweight between 18.5 to 24.9 being normal and any and 25 to 29.9 it's overweight, but from anything greater than 30 is like obese, right? So we're going to have our because underweight is bad, right? So Probably going to make the underweight red as well, normal, green, um, overweight, orange, and obese is red. Okay, so that's how this app is going to work. So let's go with if, anyway, case, if, if BMI, okay, so if BMI, is greater or equal to 18.5 and BMI is less, less or equal to 24.9. What we want to do is just print we're just going to print the color in this case. So we're going to print green. So green, green here. And then L if, so LF, LF BMI is greater or equal to 25, I think it's 25 and BMI is less or equal to okay, less less or equal to just too much. So less than 30. Okay, so less than 30 means that 29.9 is part of it. Okay. So less than 30, then we print orange. Okay, then any other thing is red. Okay, so I mean, you could also decide to add a condition like if it's less than 80.5 or if it's greater than 30, it's red, but um, this would work. If I see anything else, you're going with red. Okay. All right, so that's it. So that's it. We have our application done. That's what we wanted to achieve. So it's done. Now let's test it and see if what we are thinking would actually work that way. So going through it, I have my input here. So I'm supposed to, what's my weight in kg? Let's say I'm 75, right? And then what's my height in centimeters? Um, let's say um, 170, 
five. So it says my BMI is this, uh, but the, the arrangement is so bad, right? It says green before it says my BMI. I, I don't know, okay, it could, be, it could be good, right? Depending on how we want it to be. Yeah, if you want to see your green before we tell your actual BMI. Um, yeah, that is one way to go about it. But I do want the BMI to show this before. Um, before that. So I'm just going to take this and rearrange it. So I'll go with, okay, let's see your BMI. Let's see, this is your BMI color code. Okay, something like that. And let's run this again. So 75 and let's say 168. Um, these 26, okay, the color code is orange for what I did. So that's it, we've upgraded our BMI app. Uh, now it uses a try and accept, we're also using con other conditional statements that we have if, elif, and else nested in our try and accept, okay? All right, so that should be X for lab two. Let's move on to lab three then. Are we okay? Any questions before we move to lab three? Yeah, I have a question on the accept part. Okay. Are you able to like maybe show how we would end up with the code in accept being run? Yep. Okay, 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 all right, yes, yeah, we can do that. So let's enter um, your weight and so I type in 60, right? So 65. So we just have, oops, something is wrong, right? Because what we expect is a numeric value and converting it into an integer. If I, if I type in 65 in words, there's no way that can be converted into an integer. So it's going to actually give you a runtime error. If I were to, let's, let's kind of, just to make this work, um, make this clear, let's comment out the try and the accent. Okay, let me see, I have, hmm, of course it's all indented. I, Yes, good. How do you unindent? Anyone knows how to do that? I'm not sure how to unindent instead of. Hmm. Yeah, I knew I was going to get this error. Okay. Okay, just because I, I want to be lazy and not, and not change it, I'm going to just say if one is put one. Okay, let me see, see if one. I mean, equal to one, I had the error because it's supposed to be um, equal to in terms of, okay, let's do that instead so I don't confuse anyone. Um, one equal to one being that we are comparing it, right? And it will always be true. So let's go with this. And now if I type in 65, Right, we're supposed to get this error, which would have been a value error, right? stating that it cannot convert the 65, which is a string, to an integer because we are using this int conversion function, right? But then, because we use the try and accept, we don't want to show users this error. We definitely do not want your users to see an error like this um, or whoever is using that application. So. Wrapping it around, a try accept would give a more user friendly message, right? Agnes, does that help? Yeah, it's just I was trying to find to find a way to make the accept part run and I couldn't oh, get run. It. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but okay. yeah, it's helpful. Thanks. 
All right. Okay. okay, so we can move on to lab three. And if you have any questions, please just put it in the chat or um, raise your virtual hands or unmute, okay? And I'll just reach out. Um, if you are also somebody who's, should I say, who's shy or introverted and you don't want to ask in public, Zoom has like direct messages, so you can send me directly, okay? All right, so lab three, for lab three, we're already 41 minutes into our, uh, uh, so lab three is going to be um, a bit quick or I might not complete everything. Well, I'll try as much as possible to complete what we can within the period, okay? So lab three, what we'll be covering is more built-in functions. Um, I might not like going to in-depth examples for all these, and then we would also go through importing modules and packages and then user-defined functions, okay? List is more of a bonus, right? So if you're not able to cover it in lab three, I'll just take that off and we'll cover these three. Then um, subsequent labs, you can go over the list or something that you can also do on your own, okay? So more built-in functions. Um, we've gone over some, but then we have Max. Max is, uh, it returns, I mean, the name suggested. So it returns the largest in a list. Min will, oh, this is so copy and paste error. So min will be the smallest. Min will be the smallest. And then len len gives the length of some objects then we have range range is something that is good to know now because in other concepts in python you would you would probably um, come into contact with range so what range does is it returns a sequence of numbers it's by default we'll start from zero increment by one and stops before a specific number, right? So you specify the start, the stop. Um, if you don't specify any start, the stop is what you specify, right? The stop part is required. So if you put in a stop, it would start from zero to incrementing by one um, right before that number, okay? The stop number. Then we have the help function, which when invoked, okay, so I just noticed something. Call function, which when invoked, would, would more of um, start, it would invoke the interactive help system in Python, right? So this is already in Python. If you have Python downloaded, it's there. So it would, um, it would invoke that and then you can key in some information. We'll go through it so you get to see how that works. And then there's the DIR function, which returns a list of attributes or methods for an object, okay? So now let's go through the example so you get to see what we're talking about. So for, let's see, let's print, let's go to our, our max. So, and, um, To print what we do with max is so I don't mix it up with a print. So let's go to our max. Max num is equal to max of let's pick some numbers. So one, three, six, nine, two, right? And then we print. Max num, okay. So let's run this. So it brings out nine because it's the maximum number in this list. Okay, so it just works like that. So you pass in some list or, or values and then it, it, you just get the maximum out of those values. So if you're working with a lot of data and you're doing some data analysis or anything, you could check out the whole whole column of values and then just get the max out of it, okay? Um, you don't have to key it. This would work with variables as well or lists. There are other data types that it works with. So 
that's also um, Psalm 32. Take note of. Then let's go with our men. So men, men um, would also be just going to go with the same set of numbers. But instead of max, we're going to pick the min, which would be the minimum, and point to that. So um, min. And so we know our maximum value is now our minimum value is one. Okay, so that's easy. Then we have the length. So length is for the length of some objects. Now the, the types that we have. Um, what we could probably do with is the, a string, right? So let's say we have, um, let's just say example string is, this is an example for length, okay? And then we have, um, let's print the length of the example string. So we'd say len e x s t r, right? So we're going to print out the length of the string. And then, so it's 29. So we have 29 characters and this includes the spaces, okay? It would count the spaces as part of it to include the spaces. So this, it's more like what you would see in um, Microsoft Word, right? Where you have all those characters and words, and then you can you're able to check like the the count. Okay, something like that. Okay, cool. So we've we've gone through our first three. I hope that is clear. Those are very simple ones, so that should clear. We have range. Okay, all right, Charles. Good. Question, um, does it determine multiple? Yes, it does. So let's just add your numbers here. So 43, um, 562, even negatives can be included. So let's just do this. And it doesn't matter if it's fluid. So let's go negative two, three, four, five, and Okay, so, oh wait, what happened with my, okay, great. So five, six, two, we have a five, six, two um, for our maximum because we added this value and then because we added a negative two, the min becomes negative two now and then our length is still 29, okay. Because I hope that answers your question. So let's go with range. So for range, um, as I mentioned, it just creates a sequence of numbers. So maybe, so I want to create, I want to have um, numbers maybe starting from zero to four, okay? And I don't want to be typing like zero to four, okay? So what you would do is you would use range for it. Um, and this is something you would need a lot when it comes to loops, right? Where you want to loop through something a number of times, you'd usually use range in, in that setting. So let's say I can uh, I can say range zero. If I say range five, it means that it's starting from five, right? So it's starting from zero. I just said starting from five. <laughs> starting from zero and at four, right? So it always stops one number before your stop number, okay? So if I say range five, it means zero, one, two, three, four, okay? Just to see it, um, range, because range is seen as a type, unfortunately, if I say print, if I print this, it would still be range, right? Like Python has this weird way of, of showing that. So it just is range zero, it means I showing from zero to five, like, it's not so clear. So just for us to see it, I'm just going to look through it and then print it out individually. Okay, so let's do that. And I know it's not going through loops, so some of you might not get it, but just see it as some code that 
is looping through all the numbers that have been created in the range and it's just output outputting it or printing it out. Okay. So let's go through this. So you see it's from zero to four. Okay, so that's what's generated. Um, if uh, range allows you to key in, as I said, the first one is the start, second parameter. So what you pass in, for, if you pass in only one, it means it's the stop because that's the required value you need to pass. But if I put in one, I want it to start from one. I want it to end at five, so six. And I want it to be incremented by two. Okay, so which means it start from one and add two. Okay, so if I want something like that, I can, I can do that with range, right? And I'm using one to five, but it could be a lot of numbers. Okay, so um, that's what range does. It allows you to like generate these numbers from start where where you want it to start, where you want it to stop, um, how you want it to be incremented. Okay. So that's for range. And then we have help. So help, simple, that's something you would want to, so let's go with help. They have to do is just type um, help, run it. There's some interactive section here where you get to put in what you want. So I can say, um, what do I want help with? So help with this. By typing math. So, math, when I typed in math, it's giving me. So, the first part was like the introduction, just telling you what you need to type. When I type in math, now it gives me some information about math. So, the math, math is a, a module for Python. So, it tells me the name is math. Um, this module provides access to mathematical functions defined by C standard. Okay. So, there are other things. Um, in any, most of the modules that are in Python you could just help and put that, then it would work. Okay, so if you want to stop the quit. So let's quit that. Um, and the same way I could actually just key in the math here. And I believe if let's clear this so it doesn't become if I put it as a string, right? So if I pass it what I want to check or what I need help with um, to help, it would specifically give me that information instead of having the interactive session where I have to key math as another step. Okay. So that's for help. And this DIR is kind of similar to, well, I would say similar to help, right? It's, it's similar in a way, but, um, or what it does is it just lists it out. Um, it doesn't give like extra information or anything like that. So mm, let's say, um, let me pick something. So I have, uh, we already have some functions, but um, some variables. So let's pick string, right? Let's pick some string. So we have, and call it DIR string. This is called to check this. Now, if I say DIR, yeah, string, okay. Oh, we just, did I do DRI? Sorry, DIR here. So now, because um, let's just take note that our DIR STR here variable is a string type, right? So now it gives me all these other methods or functions that I can do with string. So any string type I can check, I can use upper um, swap keys and things like that, um, that are available for a string data type, right? So me to use. So DIR will just give you, maybe you're importing some module or some package, you're not really sure all those methods or functions in there. Um, you can go ahead um, and just check it out. Or you, you have a fair idea, but you just want to be certain, right? So you can use the DIR to just check it out and then 
and then go ahead and use it. Um, for help, it would give you some further description on it. Okay. All right, so that ends our examples for the built-in functions. Any questions? We are moving on to imports. Okay, all right, moving on. So imports. All right, so I'm just looking at the best way to explain imports. So Python has, Python has the import, where do we go? So it has like import system, right? It's more of a system. I can't say it's a function. So there's like import system in Python. And what this does, it, it allows you to bring in some other code that's written in some other files, right? That are available. So libraries, that, let's just call libraries. So um, Python is open source. People are writing different implementations. There are things you want to do or you would use in your Python code that somebody has already written. So you don't have to like, write every aspect of it. You can just import what the person has written um, use whatever function we defined there and use it to perform what you want it to. Okay. So Python gives you the ability to import these modules or packages into your code. Okay. And some of them could be your own module, your own package. Right? So if you're working in a big team, um, somebody's writing some packages that would be needed for the whole project, right? So you can just import it in the different aspects of your code and where you would use it. All right, so there are some modules, some packages that already come with Python when you install it, right? My random is one of those, right? You do need to do any extra installation for you to get that request it's, a, it's different. You would have to pip install that, right? So you have to install that as well. But for the first two, I intentionally added a request because I wanted us to also see how you would install it. Okay. All right. So we'll go over math and random. And then we'll go over our request. We import that. Um, there are lots of functions or lots of methods that are in these modules and packages. But, but what we would do is just use like simple ones. We're just going to use one, one of them, mainly one, right? And then you can um, find out more about them if you need them. Uh, you can just find out more about them and use it, use them yourself. Okay. All right. So for import, what you do is you use the keyword import to so importing something. So import math. So this math. So if I put in import math, it means that um, when Python sees this, it would import the math module. And then now I can access those functions, right? But if I want to access those functions, I have to, um, the functions that I would be using because they are under math, I would need to call them by indicating math first. Okay, so let me just give an example. Uh, so what's in math? Let's do math dot pi. Yes. So math has pi. We use you just the value of pi. Um, so let's see, because I want to print out the value of pi, which is part of the math module, it's going to be math dot pi, right? So math dot pi. So it's like pi in math module. I just show me that. Okay, so I get the value. Um, if I were to only have pi, if I were to just key in pi, Python doesn't know that in, um, automatically, right? Python doesn't know what pi is automatically. So if I need pi, I need to import my math module for it, uh, for me to access that. Okay, so that's it. Uh, math also has this other one, that's um, power, powers, right? Doing um, two to the power three or whatever it is. So that would be POW. So that's a function called POW. So if I see the variable um, uh, test, this is in power test. Okay. So, and I put in my 
dot p o w right. it expects two values so the first one is going to be the base and the second one is going to be the power right so this is saying that two to the power three okay so print uh, okay so i have eight i have eight points so i already into that part and these are things i go from the math module okay oh so that's with math let's move on to random so for random um what do you have in the random module is you would want to create something random, right? Either a number or you want to randomly choose some options, right? Um, you'd use random. So random has different, okay, so that's, that's more, let's import it and see how that works. So import random. Um, let's think if I get yeah, uh, this, because I've done a lot of other importations, I'm not sure. If it's going to work the way I want it to. Yeah, it just has random as a big one because I have other things important. Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's see. Help. Let's help random. Let's do okay, so. Uh, this gives like specific definition. It didn't give like full thing in terms of all the options in random. There's a URL here for us to check it out if we want to. Um, but since I know what to, I want us to go over, we are not going to check this URL here. Okay. So it, it generates random, it's a variable generator, right? So it just generates variable values for you. So let's go with random has. Random has um, rand int, which is R N D I N T, and what that does is it generates random integers. Okay, so there's random integers. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's just print random and dot rand int function. Okay, so whatever. Oh, wait, what did I put in there? Uh, okay, so it's usually random has, um, you need arguments in terms of um, integers between some particular value. So let's say one and eight, sorry. Yeah, so I forgot to indicate the random integers I want. This would be not putting in the parameters means it has to generate random integers or all the integers that exist. So, limiting it where it knows that okay so i'm generating random integers between one and eight okay so that's it so we have one and eight um when i run the next time it's five so these are like random stuff that would it would always change right so whatever I, six so anytime I run it it's some random number that would be generated so if you're really somebody who is Probably into games like um, die. Uh, I think if you check some of those Python known examples or projects, um, maybe a die toss or something like that, then you'd use the random module in that code. Okay, so what you do is you'd want to generate some random values because um, for coins it would be um, for for dice between one and six, right? So you want to generate it and then that's it, okay? Um, if you were also doing something for rock paper scissors, you could also work with random rand int um, between one, because you have three choices, right? So between that rock paper scissors. So you can use random int or there's another, there's something else in random that would work. You can use random dot choice um that would allow you i'm not using random dot choice here because i would have to include ah it's one 
it generates one. Child, so it will generate one at a time. Okay. All right. Um, so if you have less choice, so choice is also going to give you like um, that, you give it like specific options. I'm not using choice here because I would have to use um, a list, but okay, let's go ahead. Let's just, we've not talked about lists, but yes, you would see this as a list at some point. So I'm just going to go with, choice so choice yeah let's say for you to choose from some options some list of values so it could be let's use our rock paper scissors thing so rock so choose between choose between rock paper and scissors right so if oh, so if you were creating a rock paper scissors game we probably use this, right? So what it would do is just choose one. Like, so Caesars, anytime I run. Okay, so second choice was also Caesars. Why am I getting Caesars? Am I running this? Why does it keep choosing Caesars? I'm not sure why it keeps running Caesars. Okay, okay, Pippa. Oof, I was just shocked that I was stuck with Caesars. I was thinking, okay, I know this code is correct. Why are we stuck with Caesars? Okay, right. So, yeah, it's, it gets to choose and it's random, so it can be in any form. Okay. All right. So, that's it for random. So, we've gone through random, we've gone through math. Um, then we have requests. So requests, I said I added that because, because it's something you have to install. It doesn't automatically come with Python. Um, I've already installed it in mine, so that's just weird, yeah, but okay. I'm just going to add it here, some other code here and say, okay, um, the code for installation. So if, if you want to install, request what you do is you use a percentage sign this is for jupiter this is just for jupiter okay um this this would work in jupiter if you are uh, using some other editor and it's not a notebook and you're writing your scripts in a py that's a dot py which is a python script file this wouldn't work okay so with that you probably go to your command prompt so you just go to your terminal and just put in pip install. But because this is Jupyter, you will go with pip install request. Okay. So I think it's request. That's this. Okay. So I already have that installed, but then it comes in here. You may need to restart kernel. So it would install it for you, right? So this. As I said, let me add it here. This only works for the notebook. Okay. All right. So we installed our request um, package. Um, the only thing I'm going to use here simply is let me get a URL I want. Um, what it would help us do is go to like open some URL, okay, and get there are multiple things. So this way, if you're creating like APIs or you wanted to do things with work with APIs in Python, right? Or we want to work with some URLs and get some information. Those who do like web scraping and things like that, you want to pick the information on a website. Um, you'd probably use the requests module okay so what we're going to do is we're going to import requests um just say wwc data 
And what I'm going to do is say request.get. It has a lot of things, but I'm just going with a get here. And I put in the URL I want. So I'm going to just pick in some data from the Women Who Code website. So let's just key this in, slash we didn't do anything, but. And what we we'll do after this is print it. So I want to print wwc.data.text, right? I just want the text from it. Um, did I just do the dot? Okay, so wwc data text. When we run this, so this is from Women Who Code website, right? So you get to see Women Who Code is an international nonprofit dedicated to inspiring women to excel in technology careers, right? So you get all that from the website, okay? And there's the title page. So there's a home page. Um, we have this content, there's, there's supposed to be something in the body. Um, I don't know, I know what I think it's a lot more images, so it's not here. Okay, so you could do that with a lot of sites. You could just get it and pick out the text. So if you are doing web scraping, you have a particular page, you're always checking it out. Um, if the text updates, we are just picking that information from that site. Okay, so that's something you can do. And you need a request module if you want to do that. Okay, so we are 12 minutes over. We've still not, we've not talked about the user defined functions. Um, would you want us to go ahead with it and just finish up with the user defined functions and then we would end today? Um, that's if we are not meeting next week. That's our, the end of our Python labs for women who could for this period. Um, we scheduled a two, um, two sessions for Python labs, which is last week and today, so that would be it. So should we go ahead with our user-defined functions or NKS it's already 8, 12. And um, that's GMT for those in Ghana. Okay, please put it in the chat, react. Let me, let me get some feedback. Continue, okay. Okay, continue. All right, okay. So I'm going to continue with the user-defined functions. Um, at any point, if you would want to drop off or you have some other appointments, I think you can um, you can drop off. We would have this, this is being recorded. It would be put on YouTube. So you get you have access to it, right? You'll be missing out on this. So moving on to user-defined functions, we've talked about other functions, ones that are in packages and modules, uh, ones that come automatically with Python, right? But then you can also create your own functions for specific purposes. So you can create your own function and, and use it. Why would you want to create a function? That's probably a question that somebody can ask. So you create a function because there's some particular sequence of code that's in your application or what you're trying to achieve, you, you'll be repeating it, right? You keep repeating it. If it's something that you'd be repeating, um, well, you can use a function, you can create a function for that block and then reuse it by just calling that function, right? So that particular functionality is something that you can keep reusing uh, because you've defined uh, the set of steps or the set the set of statements um, in a function. Okay, so function mainly some sequence of statements that you we want to execute and something you want to reuse. So the main reason you're creating function is because it's for reuse. Okay, throughout your program, and for creating function in Python, keyword is def 
DEF definition, right? So think of it as like function definition. So definition DEF, and then that's a keyword, which states that, okay, there's a function definition, then the name of the function you're creating. So let's say we are creating um, calc, calc BMI, that's like calculate BMI things. Um, so calc BMI, and then we look at it in terms of afterwards, you would have the option, which is not all functions require inputs. Okay. So some functions require inputs, some do not. Right. So in our calc PMI, you're going to require input. So what we want to indicate is say the arguments, like what inputs are we expecting? Right. So what that's what you state after the function name is to indicate the inputs that are expected. Okay. All right, so in this case, we want weight. Okay, so let's call it weight and height. Okay, so that's what we expect. So calc BMI function that we are creating expects weight and height. Okay. All right, great. So let's move on. Now we would have a colon because we are create, now we have a block block of statements that we want to run together, right? So we have some block that should be run together. So we are starting our block. So we have a colon right after that, and then we have our block of statements following that. Okay. Okay. Now for functions that have to return some value. Right, so not all functions return some value, but functions that have to return some value at the end, kind of like what we have for the input. Um, it returns whatever the user enters. Um, you would see the return keyword. Right? So the return keyword, and after the return keyword would be to indicate what it should return, right? what it should return to the user. So you see that in this function we're going to create, okay? All right, so let's create, so let's go with our first one. So what we are expecting or how we want to calculate our, our BMI is we want it to be weight because we have a height, right? So, we, so I have to probably get to the BMI calculator. What is the BMI calculation? I think is weight divided by height, squared, I just want to be sure. Yeah, so it's weight um, by height squared, okay, right. So we'd say BMI value is equal to weight, and this is a weight that will be passed to, this is a weight that will be passed to the function, right, so height, um, to part two, I, I could use a math function for this if I want to, right? Like, yeah, will be height to the part two, so I can pass it to the math function. Um, but in this case, I'm not doing that. So now that we have, we've calculated it and it's in our BMI. Hmm, let's see. Okay, and I've calculated it and it's in our BMI function, what we would do is return it. Okay, so return the MI value. Okay, so I'm done. This is a function. Okay, um, Charles, great question. Okay, so print. Print is something that is going straight to the display screen, right? It's something that is printed. It's an output that ju just goes straight into the screen, right? It's like either screen or, I mean, generally it's going to be screen. So it's something that would just be displayed immediately. So it's just printing, echoing something onto the screen. Return is, return it, okay. 
return is not the right word. So return would be some value that some function is bringing back, not to the screen, but something that you can do something to. You can either store it in the variable if you want to, right? It doesn't have to be printed. There's some value that that function is giving it back to the program, and then you choose what you want to do with it. So it's either storing it in the, one thing you can do is store it in a variable or use it as an input for print. Okay, so you see that for some functions, some of the things that I did with some of the prints, um, like we have random choice, right? So this random choice or rand int, these functions, when you call it, they are returning some value. But now the value that's being returned is being used as your input for the print, right? Okay, so that's why I can call the function within a print because it's returning some value. Okay, and the same way, the value that is being returned, it can be stored in a variable. Right? By print, automatically is going to the screen. You can't store it. You're not doing anything. Whatever value, whatever print that is, just displaying it on the screen. Okay, I don't know if that helps you. Okay, great. So, um, oh, it's too wide. Hmm, okay, that is possible because I'm using, my screen is a bigger screen. So, how would you, okay, so you can see properly. What do I do? Can I minimize it? Okay, let's see. I want to share my other screen. Okay. Does this kind of help? Or it should be in the middle. Is this helping? Are we okay with the way it is now? No. Okay, is anyone else have an issue? Um, let's see, are you, I don't have this on your phone or is it on a machine? I just want to be sure. The machine and it's not good. Um, is anyone, okay, laptop. Okay, laptop, yeah, sorry. Um, is anyone else experiencing the same thing? Okay, it's okay on your. Oh, is there a font issue? Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. I get, I get that. Okay, sorry. I think the last time my font was bigger and I changed it after, after the call because I needed to use my VS wood for something else. Is this okay? Okay. Um, for your since since it's working for the others, is there any way you can check your um exit like the full screen mode on? I know Zoom has some options for the viewing mode. Um, either I can exit the full screen mode and like choose something to fit to your screen. I think there is a fit fit to screen option. So try that and let's see. Okay. Mm, that's how you see it. That's so weird. 
All right. Can you try the options I just said in terms of um, exiting the full screen mode and changing it to um, some other setting in terms of fit to screen or something else like that? Okay. All right. So let's try that. Okay. Thank you. So moving on to the Cal BMI function, um, I did mention that we've created, we defined our function, right? So we have our function definition, now we can call it. Okay, so we're calling this function. And what we want to do with the value is it returns is put it in some variable, right? So we'd say maybe S BMI. So S BMI is equal to Cal BMI. Now we pass, we're going to pass some weight and height to it. So let me pass actual values now. We can change it anytime later when we are upgrading our BMI calculator up. Right? So 177. Okay. So I've called my function. The values return it returns will be stored in this variable as BMI. And now I can print it, right? So print as BMI. I'll print it as BMI and see, have this value. Okay. Oh, wait, the 60. That's supposed to be a value. This looks a bit like, I don't know, it doesn't look right to me. Okay, so BMI is weight. Weight, height, oh, because it's supposed to be converted. Okay, all right, so good. All right, so I'm just going to convert this to one point. That looks so weird. Um, I mean, the function is working. It's just the data I pass to it that isn't right. And this function is something we use in a bigger, um, in a bigger program. So um, it's okay if it's like this. Okay. All right, so we've created a Cal BMI function. It takes two parameters, that is weight and height, and it returns the calculated BMI value, okay? So that's it. So if anyone else is using this function, all they have to do is call the function, pass in the weight and height, and they get back the BMI value, right? They don't have to go through this whole weight divided by height squared calculation again, because it's already been done in that function, okay? All right, so that's it for this function. Let's, let's just define one other function and then we can, we can move on and upgrade our BMI calculator with what we've learned. And then that would be it. Okay, we can end our user function. So let's say um, function called welcome, right? We, for welcome, you don't expect any, any parameters. We are not returning anything. We are also not taking any information. Okay, all right. Yes, I'm glad that it's working then. Good. All right, so for our, for our welcome function, we are not taking in any inputs, right, or arguments, and then we are also not returning anything at this point. So all it does is this function just prints out stuff. Right? So you can say, hey, um, welcome to this awesome app, okay? And maybe print something else. Hmm. Let us know if we have anything. Functions, right? Like something like this. This is very simple. This is a function that doesn't, all it does is just prints this out. So um, we can call our welcome function and we would call, we don't need to assign that to any variable because it doesn't do anything, right? So we just say welcome, that's it, and we call it. Okay. And it prints it out because it's not returning anything. So you don't have to assign it any 
um, we don't have assign, assign it to any variable or pass it to any other function. Um, you just call the function and then that's what's in the block. Okay, so we've seen two different types of functions that we've defined here. And that would be it for our user-defined functions. I believe we are going to end it here. We are already over time. So um, ending lab three with user-defined functions. Uh, I'm going to scroll up quickly, okay? Uh, and just take out the section so I know where we got to in lab three. Okay. I will be I will be sharing this. Uh, I think it's already in GitHub, but it doesn't have the updates. So I will be sharing this in GitHub as well with the updates. Okay, so this whole section isn't coming in. Let's delete this. And then we have our BMI calculator app version four, right? So we already have our version three and our lab two version four. It's where now we know how to create functions. So we're going to change our whole app into functions, right? So we're going to have functions, um, break it apart and break it into functions that we can call. Whilst we are doing this, because we've talked about imports, let's just, let me just show something quickly on imports in terms of you having your own, um, if you needed to import something yourself. So let's go, um, maybe importing your own file. Okay. So we're going to create a simple Python script file. So this is going to be example, example.py. Notice py is no notebook, it's a Python file. So example of py, and then what we do here is define some function, right? So define test, test, mod, test mod, right? So what we're defining is, okay, print. So print, um, this is a uh, um, module created. This is a module we created and want to test. Okay, let's print another one. It worked. Okay, all right. So something like this, I'm done. So saving it. All right, so we have example py. So I'm going back to our lab three. This is going to be another import example, but still our function. So let's come here and see import example. Okay. So I'm importing example, which is example py our file here. And what I'm going to do is call our function, which is test with the new function again. Test mode. So it's going to be as I mentioned you have to indicate that this test mode in example. Okay, so test mode. And we can run this. And what just happened? It doesn't have test mode. Oh, uh, okay. I had some other examples. I think that is great. Uh, let's just be sure it's correct. Okay, so this is me not making this work and I'm going to rename this. So let's say example let because I had created one already. So I think that's why it's not working. So now let's make this work. Okay, so example now that's going to be example let Ah, finally. Okay. All right. So this is running through it. I had some example file that I'd created already. Um, and it was in this lab. And I think Python cached it. So the example module that had been cached was there. That it didn't have the function called test mode. So that's why we had the error previously. So I just renamed it so that it sees this new one. Okay. So you can have your py function, um, your py file with your functions or whatever you'd want to use in another file. 
then in a different file, you can just import it. You can just import that file that your PY file that you already created and just use those functions if you want to. Okay, so you can, it doesn't mean that's the only way you can use functions. You can use functions where you create all your, you define all your functions in the same file that you use it, but then you can also define your functions in another file and call it in a different um, Python application. Okay, so I just wanted to show that as well. All right, so that's it. Any questions or anything I need to go over before we end? Um, should we go over the BMI version four or just like last week, leaving that out in the notebook so that you can um, go through that yourself? I waiting for reaction chats or Zoom virtual reactions. Dialogue. Okay, all right, yes, so we can end. We've already spent an hour and 30 minutes. So that's it. We've gone through functions. We went through built-in functions. We know some built-in functions from Python. Um, we also created our own functions. We created the, we went through the version three of our BMI calculator and what we have to do is go through version four. So assignment is go through version, create or upgrade it to version four, you know functions. So use functions instead for a BMI calculator app. So that's it. Um, I will update GitHub immediately after this session ends and you can reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, if you're already on the woman who could um, WhatsApp group, um, you can reach out there. You can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, if you go to the Meetup, you should see you should see my LinkedIn information there. Um, I'm available if you if you have any questions. Okay, thank you, and bye.